Sachin Kumar Endrin, which is not the easiest name for comedy. <laughs> Many crowds, understandably deterred by the sheer foreignness of it. <laughs> but it's okay, because I sound white. <laughs> My accent is a mix of Middlesbrough and Birmingham, and I think we can all agree, what a match made in heaven that is. <laughs> I was born in the UK, and I'm very invested in the heritage of this country as well. For instance, my grandmother, she worked at Bletchley Park as a codebreaker during the Second World War. Although, looking at my grandparents' generation, and their struggles when it comes to using technology, I can't help but feel that actually the Enigma code might not have been that difficult to crack. <laughs> you just go into settings <laughs> and click decode. I say I was born in the UK, I grew up in Middlesbrough, so I might actually have been better off in the third world. <laughs> Has anyone here been to Middlesbrough? Yeah! Ooh, surprisingly enthusiastic. <laughs> How would you describe it? Shit! <laughs> the correct answer! No one ever needs a lifeline on that question. Sometimes you can't even ask the question, you just say the word Middlesbrough and someone at the back of the room prematurely ejaculates. <laughs> Shrek hole! Shrek hole! <laughs> because, for those of you who've never been, Middlesbrough is the sort of town that has more weather spoons than completed GCSEs. <laughs> Very pleased to be getting here tonight. Comedy's going pretty nicely. I make about a hundred pounds a... year? <laughs> Gross? <laughs> Net? I make a substantial loss travelling to all the gigs. And if a gig goes badly, I end up buying drinks. If a gig goes well, I end up buying drinks. If a gig goes alright, I end up buying cocaine. To give myself the same emotional roller coaster I'd have gone, had the gig gone well or bad. Come on, guys. That's the sort of lukewarm response that could yet see me buying cocaine this evening. <laughs> now, as a comedian, I'm always looking to improve from these already lofty heights. Thank you. And I think one of the potential weaknesses of my act is it doesn't appeal enough to older people. You know, made fun of old people in that Enigma Code bit. You remember that? It was pretty top drill stuff. <laughs> so I thought, how can I do material that older people can better relate to? So I've decided to do a bit about debilitating medical problems. <laughs> because recently, at the ripe old age of 25, I've been put on a regime of medication for a stomach problem where I have to take eight pills a day, and if I don't, I might spontaneously vomit and shit myself. <laughs> And a female friend asked me why I took eight pills a day, and I told her, and she went, Ugh. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty harsh. Oh, I'm sorry I don't have a more attractive, crippling medical condition. <laughs> what would that even be? I said, Shin, why'd you take eight pills a day? Well, it's a rare medical condition. <laughs> whereby my tongue vibrates. <laughs> with a sensitivity as yet unmatched by technology. <laughs> I did actually get a girlfriend recently. Normally, that gets a cheer rather than... Yeah, normally, that gets an organic cheer rather than like conspicuous disbelieving silence. And I, what happens is that I, then I go, I oh, don't cheer yet. You don't know where this is going. Which is a pre-planned line, but I say it as if I've just thought of it. And then the audience all laugh because of like, the illusion of spontaneity. And the event organiser goes, Aha! He can play off the audience. Let's rebook him. In a series of more lucrative spots. 
Unfortunately, it hasn't happened quite right tonight, so we've been able to add some genuine spontaneity. So I uh, got a girlfriend recently. <laughs> Guys, don't cheer just yet. You don't know where you've been going. I recently asked her actually if she owns a vibrator. And she replied, of course. In fact, I've got a whole drawer. She then asked me if I owned a flashlight. Now oh, it's always interesting to ask about this. Who here knows what a flashlight is? Fucking yeah. up, bit key, and <laughs> straight up. Well, for the rest of you pretending not to know, a flashlight is essentially a fake rubber vagina inside a Pringles cap. <laughs> she asked me if I owned one of these. I replied, of course. In fact, I've got a whole cupboard. I've taken out the shelves and everything so I can fit more flashlights in. Obviously, that is just a joke. But I don't actually have a girlfriend. I mentioned my stomach problems at the start of that bit. These recently led to me having an amusing medical mishap. Because of my issues, it had been recommended to me that I buy flushable wet wipes and use these instead of loo roll. And I tried it, and I was like, this is pretty good, man. It's a bit of a game changer. <laughs> I was buying some more from Astor Online Shopping, and my housemate was like, mate, what are you buying all them for? And I told him, and he went, mate, I'm pretty sure those aren't meant for use on people. <laughs> and I had a look on the Asda webpage with them, and there's quite clearly a picture of a sink. <laughs> and I went and got a pack I'd already bought, and sure enough, as the people at the front will be able to verify, there is a picture of a bathtub, <laughs> and some shiny metal plumbing, and not a picture of a nice, clean arsehole or something. <laughs> and I had a look on the back, and the ingredients list is very toxic. <laughs> and there is a big label that says, avoid contact with eyes. If product gets into eyes, rinse immediately and seek urgent medical advice. Well, I thought, things have been getting pretty sore down there. <laughs> Now I come to think about it, quite a lot more so than when I first bought the wipes. And the arsehole, whilst not quite as sensitive as the eyeball, <laughs> it's probably not a great place to be rubbing toxic chemicals several times a day. So at the ripe right old age of 25, I've now had a rectal exam to make sure that I hadn't given myself anal cancer. Now obviously when a comedian tells these kind of stories, you never know how much it's true, how much it's made up. But in this case, I wish I could say that any of that was a lie. It was only a few weeks ago, I'm still using my housemate's pseudocreme every morning and evening on my arsehole. And I've been double dipping without telling him. So I am single currently. <laughs> Decided to uh, try my luck out on the town recently. Went on a night out. Has anyone here ever been on a night out? Yeah. About 40% of you. It's actually quite poor reading of the room from me there. But it wasn't all plain sailing this night out like one of the ones all you guys may or may not have been on. You see, I got accosted by one of these no-spray, no-lay guys. Do we know them? The guys that hang out in the gents' loos of pubs and clubs, selling the aftershave with the dreadful rhyming couplets. <laughs> and if you don't get sprayed, you don't get laid. They're very strict about that. <laughs> you pay for it by contributing to this weird little tray of coins. The no spray, no lay treasure. The no Armani, no Punani treasurari. <laughs> by one of these guys, came up to me, looking to add to his stash of no splash, no gash, cash. 
no spray, no lay, he said to me. Look, mate, I'm doing ketamine in the toilet. Of a weather spoons. At this point, I think it's fair to assume that no lay is a foregone conclusion. Now, for those of you who don't know ketamine, although central London, I imagine a fair few of you probably do, for those of you who don't, it's a popular recreational drug, a horse tranquilizer. It's very dangerous. But that's just the level of dedication you get from me that you wouldn't get from a comedian with an agent. <laughs> one day that joke will stop working. Alright, you've been wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. I've been such a great <laughs>